Hi guys, welcome back to LD Gaming. So on our very first episode of Tech Date, we will talk about the Galaxy S9, the Notebook 9, Battlefield 1, the newest iMac Pro, the world's most famous tech, Intel Inside, the GP of the Year, and AMD. So let's jump in! American First tech date, Samsung will be taking to the CES stage in Las Vegas on January 9th to talk about its smartphone plans for 2018. Speculation is rising that this could be the first opportunity to see the Galaxy S9 smartphone ahead of the full launch later in February. Yes guys, they will be launching the Galaxy S9 in Feb 2018. The new details of the rumored design of the Galaxy S9 and as iterative as expected, that means the curved long edges of the screen are still present, minimizing the side bezel's impact. The top and bottom bezels are reduced from the Galaxy S8 and Note 8 design, offering an even more frontal space of the screen. So, meaning guys, there's a bigger aspect ratio coming to you for the Galaxy S9. So for the year, the rear of the device shows not only the camera housing, but also a repositioned fingerprint sensor. Yes guys, there is no fingerprint sensor on the screen yet because uh, they say that the technology is not yet ready for the underscreen fingerprint sensor. So staying with the rear mounted sensor is the only smart decision for the S9. And moving it away from the camera lens will stop smearing and reduce the image quality. So that's something I guess. It looks like the Galaxy S9 will be staying with a single lens camera, skipping the dual lens effort of many, but not all, um, competing headsets. It may be that the dual lens is reserved for a larger Galaxy S9 Plus. So, moving on to our next tech date, guys. Samsung refreshed its Notebook 9 series of laptops earlier this year, and the company is getting ready to do the same for 2018. Samsung is unveiling three new models today, December 14, 2017, instead of waiting for CES next month where we typically see a number of new laptops. The first is Samsung's Notebook 9 Pen. So, as the name suggests guys, there will be an integrated S Pen for your laptop slash notebook. So, it's a 13.3 inch 2-in-1 laptop. So, Samsung is updating the Notebook 9 Pen to include Intel's 8th generation Core i7 processors up to 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 SSD storage. The display resolution is a 1080p display with a unfortunately disappointing lack of a higher resolution option, much like Lenovo's Yoga tablets. Samsung's Notebook 9 Pen will flip around into various modes for tablet and drawing use. So, Samsung has squeezed in an HDMI port, a single USB-C port, and a regular USB port. Alongside with a micro SD storage and a Windows Hello camera to sign into Windows 10 with just your face. And next guys, Samsung is also refreshing its regular Notebook 9 laptops with 13.3 inch and 15 inch updates. Both will ship with Intel's 8th generation Core i7 processors, 16 gigs of RAM, and 1TB of SSD storage. The 15-inch model will also include an optional NVIDIA MX150 discrete graphics card, but both models will feature 1080p panels. Samsung is equipping each variant with two USB 3.0 ports, an HDMI port, a micro SD storage, and a single USB-C port. The USB-C port of the 15-inch model will support Thunderbolt 3, and there's also an additional USB 2.0 on the larger one. And also guys, the biggest, um, I think, the biggest update for this laptop or notebook, I guess, is that they will be packing the Notebook 9 with their biggest and most powerful battery, which is the 75 watt 
hexo cell battery that should include a battery life boost but the company is only committing to a big always on power with a fast charging support for when you need to top the battery up both the samsung notebook 9 pen and the notebook 9 will be available in the u.s in early 2018 and we're expecting to get a closer look at them at ces next month for this one guys for our next tech date this one is my favorite because Battlefield 1's new DLC blends Conquest and Assault and it is great! Yeah guys, the Turning Tides DLC for Battlefield 1 is one of the most hyped and most beautiful um, DLC for Battlefield 1. With all of the games that 2017 has offered up so far, the 2016 Battlefield 1 continues to give new stuff to play. The third DLC pack titled Turning Tides is being split into two releases. The second half is slated for a January 2018 release window, but the first half came out this week and features two new maps. Achibaba is infantry only and Cape Hills introduces a new mode called Conquest Assault. So they kind of merge it together in there, guys. So this new mode basically adds a more defined offense and defense structure to the classic capture the point gameplay which sometimes can feel a little stale along with the new maps you'll find new weapons a new elite class and more assignments and minor tweaks that have been a little overdue training tides is available now for premium members that will open up to every else in two weeks so for those premium users you get ahead by two weeks to master up those maps those elite mode, those new weapons, so you get up ahead with those um, regular players. So for our fourth tech date, Apple first discussed plans to release a new iMac Pro desktop computer at its worldwide developer conference in June, but only recently confirmed the launch date on its website. In this post, Apple said that the new iMac Pro will retain the slim all-in-one design of its predecessors despite packing some of the most powerful tools available. It is described as a lean, mean dream machine. You think so? So, if you think so that it's a lean, mean dream machine, comment down below on your comments on this, guys. So, key additions include an Intel Zion processor with up to 18 cores and up to 128 gigs of RAM, a 27-inch Retina 5K display, a space gray colored finish, and 1 terabyte of storage, configurable up to 2 to 4 terabytes of data. So yeah, I guess that's a lean, mean dream machine, guys. But how does it feature um, in terms of your G GPU, fans, and stuff like that? So, the iMac Pro is also set to feature a dual centrifugal fan system designed to create more airflow and AMD's Radeon Pro Vega graphic chip, described as over three times faster than any iMac GPU. So, yeah, they're gonna use the new AMD Vega GPU, so I guess that's really a mean G machine, guys. So, Apple will give customers the choice to buy the iMac Pro with an 8, 10, or 18 core processor. The entry level version, though, will retail at a whopping 5,000 US dollars. So, for our fifth tech date, the world's most popular piece of tech in 2017 is the iPhone 8. Yes, guys, it's not the iPhone. X or the iPhone 10. With all the talk around this year's iPhone lineup initially focused on the X and its unusual notch, Google has revealed that, contrary to the hype, iPhone 8 was the most searched piece of tech across the globe during 2017. So moving on to our third to the last tech date, Intel Inside. OEMs are at risk of losing valuable Intel sponsorship benefits such as marketing exposure, price subsidies, and channel compensations should the Intel Inside program be defunded. Yes guys, because of the huge aftermarket um, hype 
and popularity, most of the OEMs um, are not that uh, being demanded right now in the market. So Intel Inside has um, released that there will be deductions in their funds. So that's some sad news for the OEMs making their desktops. So for our second to the last tech date, the graphics card of the year. So the GPU of the year is no other than the EVGA GTX 1080 Ti for the Win 3 Elite. Yes, guys, that's a long name. So the bigger, the longer the name, the better the product. <laughs> so for gaming purposes, nothing trumps, trumps <laughs> the importance of your graphics card. Last year gave us Nvidia's Pascal architecture, and this year came the GTX 1080. AI, right on Q. While it has less memory than the Titan X Pascal that preceded it, the 1080 Ti has the same number of CUDA cores, had higher clock speeds with a price that's actually at, in the realm of the possible. Performance is up to 30% faster than the GTX 1080, making 4K Ultra 60 FPS on a single GPU a reality in most games. Yes guys, in most games. So which 1080 Ti is the best? In truth, they're all good. I haven't seen a single card that, that I couldn't recommend. Well, but while the liquid cooled cards might be nice if you're after lower temperatures or reduced fan noise, I'll take a good air cooled card anytime. Even among air cooled models, it's difficult to pick just one. But this year's best graphics card goes to EVGA's GTX 1080 Ti for the win 3 Elite Gaming. So, down to our last tech date, but not the least. AMD! Yes, guys, AMD is back on track! So, AMD's Feng Wang APU. So, something pretty interesting popped out on the Sys Software Sandra database recently. A very large APU that has a branding of AMD's next generation Avian roadmap, codenamed Feng Wang. This APU houses a very large number of CUs, 28 to be exact, with roughly 1,792 SPs, making it one of the largest APUs we have seen so far. This appears that the APU for desktop that we know has been in the pipeline for quite a while now. AMD has always chosen very interesting nomenclatures for its products yes that's a weird word there nomenclatures so for easier pronunciation guys it's just code name <laughs> based on alphanumeric sequence amd has always opted for naming its pet products after something real the avian nomenclature series is no different while it starts from the 40 nanometer process it carries on into the 7 nanometer node as well. Feng Wang is or are our mythological birds of East Asia that train all over the birds according to Wikipedia. And this indicates the importance of the product to the company internally. The entry list, the AMD Feng Wang is the primary platform and the CPU in question is a Ryzen part. There is a distinct possibility that we might be actually looking at an 8-core Zeppelin Die-based APU, something that we have heard rumors of before. So for our last, actually last last um, tech date, it's also on the AMD. So it's good news for you guys there. AMD set to roll out the Ryzen 2 on the first quarter 2018. So yes guys, so after the huge success of the Ryzen GPU, I mean Ryzen CPU for 2017, they will be releasing the second generation of Ryzen for 2018. And these Ryzen CPUs have been a huge success throughout 2017, but it is time to start looking towards the company's plans for next year. AMD said in the past that we will see a Zen 1 refresh before the jump to a Zen 2 architecture and now it looks like that we now expect that to happen. So as part of the present of the recent representation, 
AMD began showing its lineup of Ryzen processors for 2018, which will kick off with Ryzen 2 in quarter 1. This means that January and March, between January and March, we should be see we should see these processors launched. This is known as the 2000 series, with the Ryzen 7 1800X being bumped to a Ryzen 7 2800X. The 1700X replacement will be the 2700X and so on. So that's it guys for our newest portion on our YouTube channel, Tech Day. So if you have any comments, if you like this episode, please like, comment down below. So thank you guys for watching and see you on the next one. Peace!